Bruce Springsteen, Robert Pinsky. Born in the same hospital, Monmouth <laughs> Memorial, <laughs> 10 years apart. Here's a quotation. I grew up in a small town, but the town, Long Branch, New Jersey, was also very near New York, and a lot of New York people came to the town on vacation. It was a resort, there was a boardwalk, there was a merry-go-round. All of that was beautiful. And what I want to know is, which one of you said that? <laughs> we already figured out, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was you. But it could have been you, right? Absolutely. Um, Okay, so here we are in New Jersey, and New Jersey, you are both known for being from New Jersey, and you know, one of the most famous artists to my right, really, to be, uh, you know, um, in a location, to be linked to a location. You have New Jersey identity, heritage and culture poem, poets like uh, William Carlos Williams, Allen Ginsberg, uh, musicians, singers, Frank Sinatra, Frankie Valli, Dionne Warwick. What I want to know is what New Jersey art did you both use to form your identities as a young artist? And although everybody knows you as New Jersey artists, how much do you consider yourself a New Jersey artist, Robert? My standard answer is people say, you're from New Jersey? I say, only in the sense that the Pope is Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am completely, uh, I'm not saying it because we're here, I am completely loyal and proud of this state. When they were trying to find a new thing for the license plate, they asked me to have a suggestion. I said, maybe the best state. I actually believe people and probably know us more as the fuck you state, unfortunately. <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> that'll be. <laughs> that too. That'll be going on the license plate next year. That too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Anyway, I would name uh, William Carlos Williams and Allen Ginsberg in what I do. And when I was quite young, I did know they were great, and they did have a big effect on me. Yeah, I guess for me, as far as New Jersey heritage, when I was a kid, I grew up with Sinatra, all the Sinatra in the house. You know. And the, the interesting thing that, that he did was, was one, he, he sang, as we were talking about earlier, he sang very colloquially, the way that people speak. Yes. And, um, uh, and he created, he had a worldview that was very specific and, and quite complete. And uh, if you want to know what the 40s or the 50s or a certain part of the 60s felt like for a particular group of people in America or in New Jersey, you could go to Frank Sinatra. And, and when you, the minute the needle goes down on a record, a world is, is summoned up. You know? so, so that interested me. I, I felt like, gee, well, okay, well, I'm, I want to catalog my times in a similar fashion. And the first thing is uh, a sense of place. So at the time, Frank had moved to Los Angeles and nobody had laid claim on New Jersey in recent history. <laughs> <laughs> and when I first went to Sony, they tried to, they wanted to package me as a sort of a Greenwich Village, New York artist, you know, in, in Dylan fashion. And I went down on the boardwalk and I put out a little postcard and said, greetings from Asbury Park. And I brought it back and I said, well, that's, I said, that's, that should be, that's going to be my, my album cover, you know. But, but after, then after the first record came out, actually it was compared, there was a lot of some, some Ginsburg associations and so I went and I got into Howell and there was so much rock and roll in his poetry and, yeah. and, uh, uh, Related to Bruce's music, I'm going to do a very short poem by William Carlos Williams for you and related to what Bruce just said about actual life and colloquial stuff. William Carlos Williams looks out his window and he sees guys doing roofing. He sees the roofers and he makes music out of just seeing it's fine work with pitch and copper is the title. And listen to the way it's like it's in the key of eh and then it does ooh. Listen to the sounds in fine work with pitch and copper. Now they are resting separately in the fleckless light, separately in unison like the sacks of sifted stone stacked regularly about the flat roof, ready after lunch to be strewn. The copper in eight-foot strips has been beaten lengthwise at right angles and lies ready to edge of the coping. One still chewing picks up a copper strip and runs his eye along it.
That's William Carlos Williams. <laughs> And in, despite the um, slight age difference between you... Um, we didn't say who was older. No, I know. I wasn't, give, I wasn't giving that away. We just said we were 10 years apart. We didn't say... It was... it's, it's, and don't they actually look quite similar in an odd way? It's like maybe they were switched. No, he... he give you your observation, Robert, earlier about New Jerseyans. Big heads. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but it seems to be true. But, <laughs> and noses. But dis dis despite the age difference, in fact, you, you entered the public sphere, as it were, in about the same time. In 1973, I think, Asbury Park, and 1975, your first book, Sadness and Happiness. What was the, I mean, well, in fact, you just spoke to this a bit, but what was the atmosphere like then? For, because you are famously influenced by the rhythms of jazz and stuff like that. Bruce, obviously, a rock singer. So what, was the, what were you bringing with you in 1970, you know, in those early 70s, and what did you have to uh, get out of the way to say what you wanted to say? I wanted to write about it. It's like, very similar to what Bruce said about Sinatra's way of speaking, the way he pronounced words and his care with sentences. I wanted to acknowledge that I'd read a lot of books by that point in my life. I'd read a lot of things and thought a lot. I also want to acknowledge who I was growing up uh, in not the best section of Long Branch and the boardwalk. I wanted to have it all, not to pose as just a street kid, not to pose as just an uh, 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 intellectual, but to include everything. And uh, it's a thing to be serious about our state. It is inclusive, the ethnic groups, the rural, the urban. And uh, my ambition from very early was to say, don't leave anything out. You will but you try to include everything that is inside you that you possibly can and everything you see that you possibly can. Well, I found something in Robert's poem, An Explanation of America. I don't know if, if anyone, if you've read that, but it's, that's fundamental, necessary reading. Uh, it's huge, it's a huge poem, but in it, in the section of Serpent Knowledge, I wrote something down. You say that I may always feel as if I lived in a time when the country aged itself. And I think that that connected I felt that that's how I felt. We were both sort of operating post-Vietnam. Vietnam is exactly what I had in mind when I wrote yeah, that. That was a huge shift, a uh, cultural shift in the way the country perceived itself. And I think most artists working in the shadow of that particular war yeah. had to take it into account. Absolutely. Somehow. No question. Somehow. So no that, question. And well, in fact, and you were talking about the democratics of voice and stuff like that. And you, of course, uh, famously translated Dante, himself uh, uh, famous for writing in Italian, which was the language of the people, rather than in Latin, which was the language of high poetry. Was that part of that choice? Dante also puts together a lot of different things, um, classical stuff, pagan stuff, local politics, his personal grudges, cosmology. Um, my favorite thing anybody ever said about me, my wife, my favorite compliment, I don't think it was about something I wrote, it was something I made out of wood or paper. She said, it's a Yiddish word, she said, I love your pachki imagination. Pachki is this gesture. And Dante has a pachki imagination too. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but uh, you were talking about uh, Robert's poem, The Samurai Song. Right, right. One and, you want, and you wanted to read it. Yeah, but it's interesting sort of going to what Robert was just speaking, you know, speaking colloquially in using the colloquial voice. I was, somehow or another, I met Luciano Pavarotti, the opera singer, and he made me spaghetti in his apartment one night, right? <laughs> 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 and I'd seen an opera which I had never seen before, and he goes, at the end of the night, he goes, Bruce, what do you think? That was great, you know, it was fabulous, you know. And it, his voice was, was incredible. This was, it was later in his career, but it was still the force of nature. And he said, the pop singer. The pop singer has it over the opera singer. I said, really? He says, yep. I said, how? He says, he sings like people speak. He sings the way people speak, you know. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about sort of honing our, our language down and, you, you had the great comment about your pal who's the songwriter in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, Pat Alger, who's written a lot of country and western hits, uh, Pat and I did a couple of shows together, and 
we were interviewed in Texas by Distrack. He said, what's the difference between writing a song and writing a poem? And before I could answer, Pat, who's a poetry buff, a uh, Frost collector, Pat Alger said, well, a little poetry can really help a song. Real, little poetry really good. Too much poetry will sink a song. I've practiced both, both, uh, <laughs> both disciplines, at least what I thought was poetry in the first couple of records. But, this, but I want to do, do one of my favorite poems of, of Robert's called Samurai Song into a song of mine where I was pair, trying to pare that language down. So. This is a samurai song. When I had no roof, I made audacity my roof. When I had no supper, my eyes dined. When I had no eyes, I listened. When I had no ears, I thought. When I had no thought, I waited. When I had no father, I made care my father. When I had no mother, I embraced order. When I had no friend, I made quiet my friend. And when I had no enemy, I opposed my body. When I had no temple, I made my voice my temple. I have no priest. My tongue is my choir. When I have no means, fortune is my means. When I have nothing, death will be my fortune. Need is my tactic. Detachment is my strategy. When I had no lover, I courted my sleep. There's a darkness on the edge of town. There's a darkness on the edge of town. Well, they're still racing out of the trestle. That blood had never burned in her veins. Now I hear she's got a house up in Fairview. And the style she's trying to maintain. Well, if she wants to see me, you can tell her that I'm easily found. Tell her there's a spot out in the Abrams Bridge. And there's a darkness on the a secret son everybody's got something that they just can't face some folks spend their whole lives trying to keep it they carry it with them every step that they take till one day they just cut it loose cut it loose or let it drag them down where no one asked any questions it looks too long in your face in the darkness on the edge of town In the darkness on the edge of town Now some folks are born into a good life Other folks they get it anyway, anyhow Me, well I lost my faith when I lost my wife those things don't seem to matter much to me now So tonight I'll be on that hill Cause I can't stop I'll be on that hill with everything I've got Lies in line where dreams are found and lost I'll be there on time and I'll pay the cost For wanting things that can only be found In the darkness on on the edge of town in the darkness on the edge of town in the darkness on the edge of town 
just a normal Wham Fest event. 